On the western slopes of the Pennines, just to the east of Oldham, can be found a cluster of villages known collectively as Saddleworth. Geographically speaking, the area lies in the White Rose County of Yorkshire, but in 1974, Saddleworth was taken out of Yorkshire and placed in the administrative care of Oldham in the Red Rose County of Lancashire. Despite their sudden and unwelcome relocation, the inhabitants believe strongly in their Yorkshire heritage and fight to preserve their individual identity at every opportunity. One tradition in Saddleworth that goes from strength to strength with each passing year is that of the Whit Friday celebrations. The Whitsuntide walks followed by the Brass Band contest. Whit Friday is a movable feast dependent on Easter. It falls eight weeks after Good Friday and can be at any time from mid-May through to mid-June. I too remember the excitement of the Whit walks. New white dress, socks and sandals, white ribbons in my hair, a basket of flowers hanging from my fingers and a burning ambition to hold one of the banner ribbons. It was never to happen. I was always too young and the older girls would get the honour. Even as early as 1906, the Whit Walks were already a well-established tradition here in the North. But I digress. This is a story of Saddleworth, not a trip down my memory lane. As the bands throughout the scattered villages strike up the first notes of Hail Smiling Morn, and crowds gather in the streets. Anxious faces are turned towards the heavens, looking not for divine intervention, but for a blue sky without a breath of wind. If you want a good spot from which to view the procession, then you have to be in your place early. Not really a problem. There are always friends around with whom to exchange news and gossip. A ripple of excitement runs through the crowd as the first notes of the band are heard, echoing around the hills, and there, in the distance, the front of the procession finally comes into view. Banner after banner. Church leaders. Sunday school children, mums and dads, scouts, guides, brownies, even the dogs are there. And following every group, comes one of the hundred plus brass bands that will take part in the evening's contest. In Upper Moon, the church is in the immediate area come together to walk along the main street and then down onto the playing fields. There, the Christian faithful gather together to take part in a joint service of hymns and prayer. The banner carriers enjoy a break and the bandsmen lay down their brass whilst they still can. Following the service, the procession forms up again and the churches march back to their respective villages. There's a lull now for a while as the villages settle back to wait for the evening's entertainment. Over 100 brass bands will take part in the competition. Dashing from venue to venue in their coaches, at each one, between 40 and 60 bands will play, gaining points towards winning one of the many different trophies and prizes that are there to be won. Crowds have begun to gather in good time for the 4.30 start. 
Each band marches a short distance to the competition area, playing a piece of their own choice, and then regroups to play one of the set pieces for the judge, who is hidden away so that he can only assess the band on their performance and not be influenced by their reputation. Local and popular bands are hard to miss though, as they attract roars of welcome on arrival and depart to appreciative applause and cheers when they finish. In Upper Mill, one of the evening's attractions is the Mounted Police Unit, who will escort each band in their turn along the street to the competition field and then return for the next. Always pleased when a visitor admires their beautiful horses, the riders answer questions and share jokes with the crowd. There's hardly time to draw breath between one band finishing and the next starting, but there's always a diversion or two to fill the gap. No matter how small the venue or the crowd, the band give it their best shot at every location. The conductor moves to the front of the group of bandsmen and women, made smaller because the drums aren't played during the contest itself, and the baton goes up for the opening bars. Emotion and the intensity of needing to perform well are written all over the conductor's face, giving way at the conclusion to a grin of pleasure. Darkness begins to fall, but the contests will continue until the last band has played even if it's going up to midnight. The crowds only begin to disperse when it's clear that no more bands will appear. All that's left is the massive task of clearing up behind the crowds, but come the morning, it's all cleared away and you'd never know that the streets had been the scene of one long party. The show's over for another year, as Saddleworth returns to being, yet again, a group of Yorkshire villages who somehow found themselves in Lancashire and still fighting the War of the Roses.